Welcome to episode six, link building strategies for SERP domination. Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about link building strategies to help you dominate the SERPs. I'm really excited about this episode. Link building is a favorite topic of mine and we're going to be going through outreach strategies, ethical link building approaches, if there's any free links that you can get that are of high value and everything in between to ensure you've got a continuous link building process that can be partially automated to deliver the best results for your business. I'm excited to get into it. Let's do it. Your support really means a lot to us. Please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribe to get some more videos. So today I'm going to give you a little bit of slang. What do I mean by that? The SLNG, which is social, local, niche, then global. Let's roll. Okay, let's talk about social link building. Look, in essence, this is what I want you to follow. I've identified the top social media platforms. Many or all of these you will know. And really from a Google entity perspective, it's powerful to be present on platforms that Google recognizes. So we've got a whole list of platforms here. Now there are different debates about whether there's any relevance, for example, on being on a platform such as TikTok, if you're not actually going to be actively contributing towards the platform. So the recommendation is from this perspective is to identify platforms that you intend to be present on. And then outside of that, if you can consider content repurposing, i.e. repurposing content that you put, for example, on LinkedIn, onto TikTok, because if you're recording short form videos, it can go onto many, many platforms. But irrespective of that, the reality of it is that in the beginning, when you're a website that has little recognition in the eyes of Google, Google and YouTube and Bing and any other search engine platform understands a platform such as Pinterest more than it would your own website. So from building your actual entity from a Google perspective, there is some value in getting links from these platforms. And then of course you go to the second question of whether you should actively contribute to those platforms. But in any event, what you will find is that there are platforms here which could be potentially very useful to your business and there is some value in, at the very least, capturing the actual URLs with your actual website name on each of these platforms, because it may well be the case that Pinterest, whilst it isn't relevant here now and today for your website, for your business, who knows where the business will be in two years from now. So if you think about it from a commercial perspective, that is a really strong rationale for building profiles on each platform capturing all of these actual profiles to ensure you've got the rights to your own brand name and then linking it back to your main domain anyway. So in that sense, building links from a social perspective is definitely the right thing to do. Okay, now let's look at what to do from a local perspective. So SEMrush has a fantastic tool for identifying local citation opportunities to help with your local listings. So Local citations are fundamentally local level listings that can help promote your presence on Google. So in its essence, one of the most powerful local citations is a Google My Business listing. So if you're a local business, like for example, Pearl Lemon, then what you'll see when we do run a search is that Pearl Lemon appears here on Google My Business for our various actual operating companies that we manage. So if you th think about this as an example of a local listing, there are, as you can see in here, many other types of listings as well. Here's our cafes on Deliveroo, on TripAdvisor, as well as fundamentally our other links. So to that end, what you can do is, as you can see here, get a free audit of your company presence in local listings. So let's do the potentially dangerous task of seeing in what bad shape our actual local listings are. And this is, as you can see, it's found what it believes to be the most appropriate listing for it and it can run a search to identify fundamentally from a local perspective where you're at from a directory fundamentally consistency perspective as well as what you need to do to fix. So we can see that there are 10 out of 27 fundamentally sites that we have listings on and the others it appears that are there are some missed opportunities. So there's 27 directories here and this is a fantastic way to think about local listings. And of course, if you have alternative preference, you can always Google best, best 
places for local citations and then what you'll get is a list that appears here on SEMrush and there's plenty of other examples for local citations. What's a good reference is to always stick to the majority of the ones that you're familiar with and heard of and then take each of the others case by case. But this is a good way to think about local listings and to very quickly audit your score and figure out what it is that you need to improve. And there's lots of information included here, as you can see, that we have plenty of opportunities to improve. Okay, now let's talk about niche publications. So as you can see, I have opened up a new tab and I've literally written SEO publications for guest posts. And you'll see that there are plenty of guides that exist when it comes to guest posts. So uh, a, a great way to think about it, rather than running a search like this, I would then do top 50 sites that talk about SEO, as an example. There's lots of different queries that you can run, but as you'll see from here, there's 43 amazing websites to learn SEO, 50 best SEO agency websites. And there's, there's resources, there's citation sources, but a list even such as this is a great way 50, top 50 websites that talk, talk about SEO, we can, based upon this search, rewrite this query, top 50 websites to learn SEO, just like it's written there. And what we'll probably get is a whole list of platforms. SEMrush, as you can see, is up here. And what you then want to do is to be able to build a list of resources where you can go ahead and get potentially niche links in niche publications. By niche, we mean industry niche. So if you're in, for example, the gardening business, top 50 sites to learn gardening, what you'll see is that the same logic applies. And now we've got the top 100 gardening websites. And then we can look at SEMrush outreach emails. SEMrush has its own tool to run outreach campaigns. And we will link building email outreach what you'll see is that there is a tool just here, link building tool. We'll go ahead and jump in and mailbox to connect the campaign, find the add mailbox above the table. Let's go to the link building tool here. And as you can see, there's a link building tool that's dedicated to fundamentally building links. And you can also build links based upon your domain. And this is where the global element actually comes in. So let me just, for example, go to pearllemon.com. We'll put in our link building tool. We'll put, we'll, put, we'll put in the actual start link building here. And what it's going to give us, as you can see, is keywords that we want to ultimately rank for. So let's just say we want to rank for SEO agency. We want to rank for SEO services. We want to rank for what is SEO? So there's three keywords, as you can see. We'll go ahead and just remove these. So we've got some new keywords. We'll go ahead and jump into here. Competitors, it's found some of our competitors. It get, we'll click start link building. And this is the way to fundamentally figure out both niche as well as global potential links when it comes to the SNLG, because from a global perspective as well, there's going to be within our competitors a series of sites that they've linked to that we fundamentally haven't. And whilst this is searching for link prospects, as you can see, select the best link prospects, start reaching out, track backlink visibility. You've also got the backlink gap tool here. So if I then go to SEMrush and think about this, what this fundamentally means is, well, what, 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 what have my competitors or where have my competitors got links from that I haven't? So again, based upon the competitors, we could find prospects. So we go to that, we'll go find, enter at least one competitor. So we go to SEO agency, we'll just dive in, look at a competitor. We'll go to Blue Array. We'll jump in and have a look at the Blue Array website. We'll put it into here and you'll begin to see that there's a whole slew within the SEM Rush dashboard of opportunities to now it is going to probably find, it's finding prospects for us based upon our competitor. We can of course add in several more. And whilst we're doing that, let's jump into here. It is collecting and analyzing data. So we'll, we'll come back to this once it's done. But if we now jump into the backlink gap analysis, you'll see that we can now identify all of the sites and we can filter these sites as well by authority score. There's a whole range of advanced filters for country by zones, if we only want, for example, UK-based links. And 
we can, on that basis, it's also given us the authority score, the monthly visits, the matches, and we can start outreach once we've ultimately figured out where the opportunities are. So a combination of all of these tools, if we go in and have a look here, it's also found 2,131 domain prospects now. We'll go to view prospects and there's just a whole ton of potential opportunity here based upon what SEMrush has found, based upon competitors, based upon potential keywords that it can add, but prospects in any event that we could potentially run outreach campaigns to. So this all together is going to really help you with identifying both niche as well as global links. And you can use a combination of SEMrush as an end-to-end -end tool or any alternative tool based upon running a search simply such as this, and you get a whole range of sites that are niche relevant that you can go ahead and reach out to. So there you have it, the SLNG. Hey guys, we've come to the end of episode six. And just to recap, we went through slang, the SLNG. That's social links, local links, niche links, and global links. I hope you took some notes. And now we look forward to episode seven.